Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live, where we're gonna paint some panther statues and it's gonna give you high fives. That was all right. Woo! Woo! Do free bird. Free bird. Um, thanks for joining us. Welcome back. Sorry we missed last uh, Wednesday. Um, somebody was a little under the weather. It was me. Um, today we're painting up some panther statues from the upcoming Icons of Bast. I'm super excited about these. Um, um, I did a little airbrushing to get them prepped this morning. So I uh, airbrushed them black, whipped out some Hold Your Blue, did a little some Hold Your Blue, added a little white, did a little little bit, a little bit brighter. And then we're just going to start painting them up. It's going to be fun and easy. And we're just going to talk and paint some cool panther statues. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's kick it to the mini cam. Are you ready, Ann, for the mini cam? I'm ready, man, for the mini cam. It's With there. Lots of it. spam. <laughs> I'm going to put some more Hold Your Blue out on the palette. I stole this bottle from Tony. I hope it's not his only bottle. Sorry, Tony. It was, it was a bottle that was there, and I stole it. I sing if I want, Monument. You can't stop me. Is there a world where you might be willing, Mr. Dallas, to move the palette slightly to the right? Perfect. God. Perfect. Love this collab. Perfect. Look at this beautiful color you get when you mix uh, Hold Your Blue and uh, Heavy Body Titanium White from Monument. I sing all day with my song in my heart. No one can stop me. All right, I'm going to use this big old brush. I'm going to get rid of most of the paint on it. Yeah, Titanium White. Delish. I'm get a little more white down here on this little panther. I'm just going to gently, gently, gently use this big old brush. And I'm only kind of tapping the edges. I think that might be a little too bright. A little more hold your blue in there. Too bright. Same, all I use are Pro Acryl paints anymore. I don't use them anymore, but I don't use them any less. Hey! I just want to start giving a little edge highlight here and there with this big old brush. Actually, I'm not really a big fan of this brush. I think there's a better brush, but this is the only one I had. It's the only one I had. Am I not in line? I'm just going to think about where the light's going to kind of fall on this panther. I'm not going to overthink it though. Just want those edges to pop. Now the tighter the edge, the sharper the material. So if you were to really get in there and draw a really thin, tight line, it's going to feel like a sharper, shinier material. I actually want to go for something a little more um, aged on mine. And that's just a choice. What do you mean by aged? 
so I'm using um, more texture. I want more texture, so it looks like a little more weather has worn out the stone. It's not, it's not new and sharp. It's not crisp. Like I'm letting those little bristles kind of stick and boop about. Mojo ball rules, teases win. Mm -hmm. Are we going for onyx look or raw vibranium? Uh, yeah, sort of black onyx. For vibranium, we like using purple, of course. So I want these to be black onyx statues. I think it just looks cooler. And it gives, especially when you're doing like, like me, where you're doing a whole table and you need some visual difference between all the different elements. If I did, you know, everything was vibranium, then you just kind of get one color. So having things of different elements kind of cast across your table gives more variety. His little foots. Gotta do his little foots. His fevers. A little more carried away, a little more bold. A little circular dry brushing. Circles help smooth it out so you don't get that dry brush look. It's a black cat coming at you like a black cat. Could see adding purple to these though. That would be kind of, kind of pretty cool. Doing a purple set or a, a white marble set would look really rad. Ooh. Ooh. That got exciting. There's so many options. So many options. I um, I kind of, um, I kind of didn't, so, okay, here, I'm gonna stipple for texture on the platform. Let's use the tip of this bristly brush. Turn it lots of different ways so the bristles all change direction and just kind of gives it more texture. Um, I was thinking about it late last night after I put these together. I put these together pretty late last night. And um, and then I laid in bed and I was like, ah, I kind of, I kind of regret putting them on the platforms because I think the way that I did my Battle for the Throne, these would look pretty interesting if you took plastic card and cut out plastic card bases and then like, had rocks up against it so they're like still carved out of the like the rocks are so they're carved out of the rock um and you could, you could i it, it would be really cool to like branch out on your um battle th for the throne sort of theme yeah and like make like if i if i were to attempt it it might be cool to do uh you know, some more foam so that they're coming out of like recesses and stuff. Yeah, yeah, build them into recesses and then like have plants growing up around them so they're overgrown. Um, the aspiration is there. I think 
it would be cool to do a, a broken set. So like doing like bat like doing battle, um, it'd be pretty easy to like build one of these statues and then cut it, and then you use a little putty to like mm. fill the area where um, where the head was or like you know maybe right can you see right here? Yeah. So like cut it right across there and then have it look like broken stone with some putty, and then the underside of the head have it look like broken, and then you have two separate pieces. Yeah. Of terrain, it looks like something you know. Something hit it and broke it off in the midst of battle. Could be pretty cool. I think that there's lots of ways to, you know, that's the fun. I mean, of terrain is, you know, the the kits we make are just little starting points, right? You know. Well, and you can throw these guys around in game, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're all. So, uh, and that kind of leans into some of the broken. So there's always, it's always a, just a, miniatures are just a starting point, you know, so when you buy a new set of miniatures, it's, you know, a Captain America or a Shuri, those are just starting points for you to explore your ideas, and um, I think that's the fun of miniatures, and I think that's the fun of terrain especially, is you don't have to just, you don't have to just take the terrain for what it is, you can integrate it to the way you want to integrate it into your table and tell your story. I think that that's such a, once again, it's the unique part of miniatures that many games don't have, you know? You know, I love the game Go, but it's not like I can, it's not like I'm telling a story with it. Put some panther herb on the bases, yeah, you could, yeah, there's little plants that come in the bow for the throne you could add to the... Um, there's a couple of other little plants here and there that you could utilize. You know, my partner loves ordering um, grass tufts. So any chance, any chance where I'm like, oh, we need new grass tufts, it is a... How comes the how comes the computer and away we go shopping for for fancy new grass tufts that never owned before. Step 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 step. Gentle painting, not going fast. We're not in a hurry. The icon's a bast. Yeah, covered in ivy as though the jungle reclaimed it, I think would look fantastic. The seeker said their wife went full Sabine and tagged all the terrain. That'd be pretty cool. White marble fountain. Yeah, the the fountain would be a lot of fun, and um, I'm gonna, I'm going to tell this story. So the fountain. At one point, I tried to convince Chick that we should put little tiny koi on the frame, and then you would put a little layer of resin in the fountain, and then you'd paint your little koi, and then you put them on the resin, and then you put more resin on top. So it'd be a little koi swimming. And Shik was like, you've gone too far with your tiny animal agenda. I'm like, I'm sorry. Tiny fish. But you can make tiny fish. Yeah, the funny thing is nothing is stopping anyone from doing that. No. Sculpt some little fish. I might sculpt some little fish. I can sculpt a little koi. You bring that in, you put it on Chick's desk, and then you say, I do what I want. I do what I want. There's no stopping me. I'm a loose cannon. Like a... 
like a bad 80s action film detective about to retire. Yes to tiny fish. I play by my own rules. You're out of line, Kemp. We'll have your badge for this. That's lighter than the other one. Add more blue. Is it hot in here? Ooh. Y'all better start asking me questions. I'm just dry brushing panthers. Don't give me that, why do you park on a driveway and drive on a parkway nonsense. Hang from the helicopter landing rails. I'm more of a, I want to, I want to jump a ski do through another boat. Kind of 80s action, like the drug dealers are getting away and I'm chasing them on a ski-doo. And I launch my ski-doo through, through their boat. Now Josh, Josh is the, Josh is the uh, moonlit, uh, lone Ronin kind of 80s action hero who practices his jujitsu, his kung fu in front of a mirror at, while well, well, the day breaks. That's 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 the Josh 80s action. Sorry Josh, I'm giving away your Do you have any vibranium canisters to show off with the hauler? You mean these? These little vibranium canisters? All six of them? I come prepared. Look at these. Yeah, they're just little canisters. Nothing fancy.
They haven't seen them built yet? Oh, yeah. They're just little canisters, and they're not super fancy. Maybe I'll show where they go in a minute. A little lighter, 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 just at the top, the top, the top. Putting on the pop, pop, pop on oh my panther drop. I might do the eyes like red rubies or something to make them really stand out. If you're going for a Statue of Liberty copper look, how would you approach that? Um, so I would paint the... Um, I would Paint them a gray color, probably. Or, yeah, probably a gray to start. Um, and then you can copper them up with a little copper color. Uh, but the patina is probably the real question you're asking about. Not necessarily the copper, but more the patina. Um, you can get a nice patina by, by mixing... Um, Where is that color at? Like this uh, turquoise. And then like, I like mixing a little pink into that. So what's the pink color? Pale pink. And then glazing this over top and that gives you a nice patina. Do one more brighter. We're going to keep this one real minimum. Just kind of picking and choosing. For the brightest areas and just getting this little tap to that bright color to it. I like these big funky brushes because you can't control them. And that means I get more randomness. Randomness is good. Those of you have some of that bright down those dark areas we've talked about before, lets those areas read very, very, very well. Ooh, love it. Let's clean our brush. If I had an easel, we'd beat the devil out of it. All right. Do, do, do. We got music playing in the background, Ian? Okay. I'm a little, we're a little low key today so oh yeah no we've got lo-fi beats jamming so 
So this is the vibranium hauler. This is one of my favorite things. I love it so much. Um, it's got little doors that pop open. Boop. And these little That thing is so cool. I love it. Boop. They just pop right in there. I love the little vibranium hauler. That was a, um, it was a very fun little uh, project that was a, a funky, it started out as a really funky little sketch, right? Just a little doodle. And, um, and really like the shape of it when we were when we were discussing making it, and um, it became um, it's like okay, well, 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 okay, so yeah, vibranium hauler, cool shape, but we need to figure it out. And um, Evan volunteered to take it on, and was just like, I can I can work with the sketch. And Evan just took the little the little sketch doodle and just jumped right in and just created this really cool looking vehicle that I think is just super neat looking and uh, as our little vibranium hauler. So very neat seeing how watching somebody take something from just a simple sketch very basic shapes and idea and just really transforming it into a fully fleshed out little idea of how it works and um we used um we actually used beetles we looked at a lot of different beetles um like beetle bugs um for the shape language of it so it was a neat little project and I thought it turned out super cool. So I want to paint this necklace silver. With my trusty worst brush ever made. Uh, yes, I have worked with resin pores in the past. A lot of fun, can be very tricky. Can add a lot to a terrain setup. Um, my pore what kind of falls has been sort of backburnered. Um, Got a lot of projects in the works right now here, and so what kind of falls kind of got, kind of got sidetracked a little, but I do plan on adding a uh, resin water pour to it um, as I as I close in on the finish of that. So I was going to paint these gold. Um, I like doing silver as a base coat to golds. But I'm thinking, what if we just leave them silver? Uh, why do you do silver as a base coat to gold? I'm curious. Um, so gold is um, typically a type of pigment that's a little diffused one might say um, and it just so like a lot of people say put brown down right you lay a layer of brown um, and then you can put your gold over your brown so what's happening is say your first layer of paint is like this right so this is the paint and you can see through it and that's because the particles are spread out 
So some paints that some paints the particles are close together. Some paints the particles are far apart. Yellows um, tend to be closer together or farther apart, right? Um, blues are very very tight. That's why blue is a bully color. It's just it's just a pigment that is very powerful that just exists in nature. Um, so yellows are spread out. So when you that's why you do two coats, right? So like if you're doing two coats of red, right? It's your first coat, your second coat, and that's how you get a solid coat, right? So same thing. People put brown down and then they put gold over top. And so anywhere that you can see through the gold, you're just seeing brown and brown complements gold and like fills in the gaps, right? I personally like doing silver because then if I'm like, if there's any like gap between the, the gold particles, I'm seeing silver, which seen, means I'm seeing metal, which, is seeing, which means I'm just seeing something more shiny. Um, um, so I like using silver instead of brown to base coat my golds, but T'Challa's necklace and his accoutrements are sometimes depicted as silver. So it might be kind of cool to leave these silver, so do silver and black statues instead of silver and gold. What do you think, class? What say you? Man, I love a black and gold combo, but I also think that the silver looks cool. Who's got an opinion? Ooh, Stryker has a cool idea. One silver, one gold, sure. What do we think? Of color, my wife loves turquoise jewelry. I'm leaning towards silver currently, unless somebody's going to talk me out of it. Let your art heart lead you. <gasps> My art heart. Oh, gosh, I'm going to replace my brushes today, I swear. He says every day on stream. Should we start a counter? Yeah, what's the vote so far? I haven't seen any votes. So far, we've got one silver, one gold. We've got a vote for a different color, like tur turquoise. Oh. Which was never on the menu, but it could be. It might be cool to do like turquoise between the spots of silver. Like I can't remember exactly 
on the the neck piece of the statue if they're if it makes sense. Yeah, there's I think there's room for interpretation on how these little things are sculpted to lead people to create sort of whatever they want. Kelfrey says silver, so there's your vote. Well. <laughs> Silver Kitty. You can always tell when Evan sculpted something because he makes a bunch of little, little over complex bits that you have to work around, like these little classic Evan. I'm gonna take him off terrain. I don't know if I shook this silver up good enough. It's a little thin. We're gonna paint mash. Classic technique taught by my sensei. One does not simply just get taught the paint mash. <coughs> oh, Ann. Let cough. Everybody's got the sick. Notice the use of glove today. Any reason? Uh, yeah, I'm not you're painting a miniature that's on a, a pencil, so I actually have to hold this with my hand. So using a glove to protect it from uh, any oils or uh, residue or anything that was on my hand uh, previously, um, especially since I just um, had a little bite to eat. And also just wear and tear. Like if, if, if the miniature is mounted on something and I'm not handling it, then I don't wear a glove. But if I have to handle it like I do for this, um, then I want to wear a glove just to protect my miniature better. For a minute, I thought you were like, what? I, it's always been here. <laughs> there's, there's always been a there's glove. There's always been one glove. Have you not noticed the glove? The glove. Ah, Evan. It's too jaggy. You gotta mash it in there. You gotta just mash it in there. Oh, I hand hairbrushed my hand blue. Oh no. I definitely wear a glove when I'm airbrushing because yeah, I tend to get it's very easy to get paint all over you. I 
Alright, let's get this different bristle brush. No, that's not good. We'll do the back later. I want to get a little more work done on this. Let's do some red on the eyes. You see painters use the top of their thumb for practice strokes. I was wondering if the glove was involved at all. Uh, no, the glove is just for handling miniatures. That's it. Practice strokes. It is, it is very funny to me, Dallas, because I know that you don't like certain textures on your hand, but you'll paint on your hand all day. Oh, I don't like anything on my hand. I don't like anything touching me. <laughs> I, but you but you will paint on your hand. Oh, yeah, I'll paint on me. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, but as soon as like my hand touches anything, I have oh, to yeah, go wash it. it. I, wish, like, I just wish paint. you could see just... Sometimes when I run out of room on my hand, if I've been at it for a while on painting, I just start doing those practice strokes on like my knee. Oh gosh. Listen, everything's a palette if you try hard enough. It's true. So I don't actually do practice strokes. Like this is more what I call sharpening the brush. And what I'm doing is, is you know, as you're painting, the tip of the brush gets all kind of clogged up. And I just, you can roll it across and you can break that seal. And then also just, it's right there and you can kind of see how that, how that bristle is going to roll. So making sure you're twirling it and getting that sharpened point. So I call it sharpening the brush. Um, but also, I really like the... Like I said, breaking the seal when that when that tip starts to get dry. Just kind of rolling it and breaking that tip. Oh look at that. Wait, I do them red. Should they do should I do them purple? These would be purple, right? Listen, purple is always the color I will say. So purple or red? Which one? Ah! Chat, go. Purple or red? Purple or red? They should be purple, says Striker. Well, just because you're first doesn't mean you're right. Well, I was more just reading out <laughs> the engagement. <laughs> Just because you're first doesn't mean you're right, Seeker. But now he's first and second. Oh. Phone? What? <laughs> that was not an option. <laughs> uh, new paint, who dis? So now we've got two, vo uh, two votes for purple and one vote for red for Mr. Rich. And magenta says T. Oh, magenta is always a. Listen, we always welcome magenta in this house. I do like the red, but it feels very evil. All right, I'm gonna try purple. Seems like purple is the heavy hitter in chat overall. Oh, it was autocorrect that said phone. Sure, Otis. We're teasing. We're just having fun here. We're just a goofy bunch of kids.
Look how big these eyes are, you get to paint. You can really get in there. Purple, purple, purple. Oh, we're gonna use this fluorescent purple. It's very punchy. And some magenta to bring out the zazz. So that's going to, we're going to mix everything together basically, right? We're going to use a little purple and a little magenta. Dark magenta. Iridescent purple. Come on, come on, come on, Monero. Come on, come on, come on. So Rich said red because I should pop. The magenta is gonna bring a little bit of that in there, but we're gonna we're gonna bring some of that punchy purple, like there, uh, like maybe maybe it's a bit of um, vibranium vibranium eyes. He's got Marty film in this. Ooh, fluorescent purple. You're so pretty. Uh, fluorescent pink's going to be very thin, but I think we can make it work. I need to give it a shuka shuka. A big shuka shuka. Monument is still here. You need to come and open up all my paints for me, please. Question is, oh, which who is that? That's who is that here from Monument? Is that Jason or Baby J? They're probably not here anymore. I need a little bit more white. Too much water. I'm 
So we're putting in some of that magenta. Did you get a shot of that face, Naz? Can you see him? Mm -hmm. So regal. So regal. What a treat to be able to turn him upside down like that. Boy, oh boy, are you kidding? <laughs> Little magenta and hold your blue mixed together and we can paint a little outline. Just to clean it up. Yeah, what do you think of that? I like it. Okay, for silver, now we're running out of time, but we're gonna do a couple more steps. We're gonna use a, mm -mm 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 -mm. I want like a blue gray, I want like a dark blue gray, not deep sea bin. Bean. See, monument left. They, they, they could have told me which what 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 blue I'm looking for because I cannot remember the name of it. It's like a. It's like a blue, gray color. Not dark neutral gray, blue black. Oh, medium, glaze wash medium. Better get your last questions in. You're running out of time. And then you'll have to wait till tomorrow for more questions to be answered. But today is the day for you to play. I should be trying the noosh. I haven't tried the noose yet. I don't have a project that I feel like it, I'm just gonna knock it all over the place. This will shade the silver just a little bit. Add some of that opacity to remove some of the shine, which will make it look more metallic later. 
just throw it wherever I want. I'm out of control. Look at him. Look at him. Gaze upon him. Oh, I missed the start. Dallas, did you base coat and do the marbling? Um, uh, no, I just airbrushed a little hold your blue and black mix and then I just started dry brushing. Real simple. Trying to keep it easy peasies. Oh my gosh, the neighbors are having so much fun right now, Ian. Just a little wash, wash. Scrub it up. Paint the paint the. can do probably probably after this a simple highlight on that silver will be good enough for tabletop what do you think what did we miss like we gotta wait for the wash dry so there's not much we can do there the eyes look pretty good I like the purple eyes. And then we'll let this dry and maybe we'll just make sure we got all the, like there's like a little silver on the black. So I'll go back and clean that up. Do a little, do a little pinch highlight on that silver, bring it all back out and maybe do a little warm staining on the, on the stone on the, around the base to show like, just to show some of that wear and tear and stuff like that. So, um, what I might also do is just do what I said. I might just break these off and actually build them into your build them into build them into like pieces of terrain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll decide. So, um, but I'm pretty happy with the overall texture and the look of the the stone. I'm happy with the purple eyes and I think the silver. I think the silver is a nice option to the gold so that's cool, it cool. we did it today and we did it did everybody have fun i did because i got to paint. Like it. i got to paint i got to hang out with people mm -hmm. uh remember tomorrow we'll be back for more talking mass transmissions live oh my ear needs a pop hello i'm going deaf um uh we'll be back for more talking mass transmissions live we got something fun to work on tomorrow oh we do have something fun to work on tomorrow. Uh, so join us back tomorrow. And remember, for all the latest news, information, and announcements coming from Atomic Mess Games, check us out on Twitter and our Instagram. So until tomorrow, we'll see you later. Have a good one. Go be safe. Go be heroes. Go be a panther. Wow. 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 Wow.